Welcome to the Jill on Money Coronavirus Market Update. It is Sunday, September 6th, and we are continuing our conversation with the CEO of TIAA, Roger Ferguson. And whenever someone writes in and asks me about their retirement account at TIAA, you may hear me say, oh, TIAA, that's a great company. Well, in this part of our interview with Roger Ferguson, we're talking about TIAA and why they are able to compete with everybody else. Here's more of our conversation with Roger Ferguson. Let's move to TIAA CREF, which I always say like that because you have such beautiful commercials. How did you get involved with this organization? So I got involved in the organization uh, and, and we've, we've now sort of shortened the name just to TIAA. An executive recruiter called me. I was working for another financial services firm. Uh, TIAA was looking for uh, a new CEO. Importantly, they because we believe in diversity and inclusion, the, the search committee wanted a broad, diverse slate with some new names that they hadn't thought of. And this executive uh, recruiter found my name, gave me a call, and I asked, would you be interested? And I was very interested because I happened to have known the company through a good friend of mine. I had a friend in college um, who was the daughter of one of the iconic CEOs of TIAA. Wow. Um, that person's, uh, the iconic CEO was a guy named Bill Greeno. He created CREF, College Retirement Equity Fund. That's still an important part of who we are and what we stand for. And I'd come to know, you know, the company through him. So when the headhunter called and I said, absolutely, I'm interested. Okay, so do the description of what TIAA is, because a lot of people who are listening to this, they hear uh, sponsorship on NPR, they've seen the commercials, and it seems to be for those in the nonprofit sector. But what exactly does TIAA do? So you're right. Um, TIAA is now a 102-year-old company. Uh, It was the brainchild of Andrew Carnegie. He looked around on college campuses, particularly at Cornell, and saw all the faculty and much of the staff uh, didn't have enough money to retire. And so he created this notion of a retirement plan, a retirement program. As you point out, we started for those in the higher ed sector, and now we serve 15,000 people uh, in the not-for-profit sector, including, yes, NPR and others. Uh, and we are you know, very much in the financial wellness business, for the individuals, now $5 million in the not-for-profit sector, um, uh, with a real focus uh, on our legacy of being a retirement organization. So when I was a financial planner, I'm still a CFP, but I remember there was this really fascinating moment. I was living in Rhode Island and mm-hmm. um, running a company, and at Brown University, where we had tons of clients, my alma mater, they had TIAA CREF as a choice. And I'll never forget, this was the 90s, And people said, oh, I have this stupid, horrible TIAA, and all my friends have fidelity funds, and, you know, I want to get out of this, and this, and and so there was this kind of a go-go mentality, obviously, it was the booming 90s, and I remember that fidelity came in as an option Mm -hmm. inside of the 403B plan at Brown, and I remember begging people and saying to them, you don't know what you have. You can't understand it. Can you describe how TIAA is able to compete with everyone else and what really is the distinction? Put it in your words so I don't sound like I'm humping for you. No, no. Well, I appreciate having somebody do that for (laughs) us. That's nice. So, look, we have um, the thing that distinguishes us is we believe that retirement security is all about both saving for retirement, so getting to retirement, and then getting through retirement. Many other firms focus on, you know, the accumulation, as we say, how much do you save? We focus on that. And then how does that turn into a personal pension when you're ready to retire? Um, And the way we do that is through an annuity. As you point out, our annuity is relatively low cost. It's simple. It's in the plan. uh, And so it is not one of those other annuities that you sometimes complain about. Mm -hmm. And we've been doing this for for many, many years. And we're very proud of the fact that our core annuity offering has a guarantee of 3%. Why is that guarantee so much higher than the general marketplace? So our guarantee is higher than general marketplace because we ask people to leave their money with us for a period of time. And then we get to invest both in regular fixed income securities, call them government bonds. We get to invest in equities. But importantly, we get to invest in a range of what's called alternative asset classes. So think agriculture, think real estate, think timber, 
uh, you know, think big private office buildings. And those uh, activities tend to have a high return over time. And we managed to then blend the return from fixed income investments with these alternative investments to give us a possibility of having this guarantee. And it's worked for many, many years. And is this still the rule? Because, of course, I'm not in the advice business anymore. But um, I remember that if you were in TIAA and you wanted to move some of the money onto the other side of the platform, the CREF, CREF, that you could only do 10% a year over 10 years. Is that still the case? Yes, there's still a rule um, about taking out over basically a 10-year period. Um, And so you heard me say that the reason we get this higher return is because we ask people to leave their money with us for a period of time. That's what I meant Mm -hmm. by saying to people, you know, if you leave your money with us in this process where you can only get it out over 10 years, that gives us the chance to do the kinds of investments that give us the opportunity for this higher return. And so it works out really well. And these are investments that most of the you know, middle income folks that we work with would not have a, otherwise have access to. What's the target when your investment committee is running the TIAA side and they say, OK, we have a guarantee of 3%. But if you're looking long term, tell people you've been in the investment world for a long time what they should be looking for in terms of their target return over the long term. What should they be thinking about? Well, let me tell you what the S&P has generated on average over the 40, 50 years that it's been in existence, more than that. So with respect to equities, what we see is roughly a 9% return, average annual return over long, long periods of time. That includes inflation. And so if you took the inflation out, that number is around 65 to 7%. That's what most economists say that the equity markets can generate average over time. I emphasize, emphasize, though, that as we've already seen, there's a lot of variability in that. Fixed income markets depends very much on what inflation has been, but those numbers are more like four to five percent. And so one should blend and think, well, gee, a little bit of fixed income, a little bit of of equities, and that's, that's what one might expect over time. But the emphasis is highly variable. Highly variable. Do you think that having an annuity product like TIAA allows people to kind of stick with their game plan more readily? Because I think one of the drawbacks that I have seen over time is that, you know, we are our own worst enemies. I, you can have me blather on on television and on radio about like you've got to be diversified, don't react, but people do shoot, shoot themselves in the foot. So is the annuity or low cost annuity, I should be very clear about this, gang, is that an environment where people can be a little bit more disciplined? Absolutely. It's, uh, to continue with your phraseology, a low cost and plan annuity is an important part of any, I think, should be an important part of anyone's retirement plan, in part because it does allow people to stick with their game plan. It allows them to have a sense of confidence that once they get to retirement, there will be you know, an income stream for life. We call it a personal pension. And so we have found that it's an important part of, of anyone's thinking about retirement. It allows them to sleep well at night when you get to the volatility of the equity markets. You have confined your marketplace to the nonprofit universe. Why not open it up to everybody? Well, first, our charter says it's got to be nonprofit. All oh, those charters. All They're those meant charters. to be changed. No, no. Um, but let me, t- here's what we are. We want to do two things. First, we want to be you know, sort of a visible, I'm going to use the word beacon, of what really good, safe retirement can look like. Secondly, we and many others have been working with uh, Congress to create something called the SECURE Act, which was just signed into law. And one of the goals of the SECURE Act is to allow the 401k space to adopt annuities more readily through you know, a safe harbor, as it's called. And so you know, even if we don't necessarily go into you know, serving the for-profit world, I'm hopeful that through these regulatory and legal changes, the for-profit world, the 401k world, can adopt much of the model that has made TIAA successful for 102 years. See, this could be the difference, again, as I point out on the show, between Jews and Gentiles. Because (laughs) I hear you being very optimistic about this and saying, like, this is going to be great. More people will learn the beauty of this beacon that shines bright from the high hills of the east side of TIAA. And I get that. Now I'm going to be the paranoid Jew. What if a bunch of crappy, bloated, expensive, opaque annuities end up 
in 401k plans. So now here's the role of what we describe as the plan sponsor, right? Every retirement plan, every 401k plan has a sponsor. It's the, it's the company, it's the enterprise, and they have committees. Uh, they're supposed to. Uh, and the role of the committee with an outside consultant is to distinguish the good from the not so good. Um, and so, you know, one of the reasons I'm cautiously optimistic is, in fact, that, you know, we have existed and, you know, one would hope that over time people compare any annuity offering with ours um, and, you know, they know what a really good one looks like. Mm. Uh, the other challenge here or the other goal here um, is to continue the process of educating people so that they become, you know, better consumers and ask their plan sponsor, ask their employer, okay, are we going to have an annuity option in our 401k and is it going to be low cost and how is it going to work? And so you want to have individuals to take a little bit more responsibility and go to their employer asking for an annuity in the plan, but also being clear what kind of annuity it's going to be. Oh, now I got to become an annuity expert with my retirement planning committee. No, now Come all you have now. to do is ask two questions. Do yep. I have an annuity? Is yep. it low cost? You're very optimistic. I think that's I excellent. Thanks so much for listening today. And we have one more day where we can talk to Roger Ferguson. That's the beauty of a long weekend. Don't forget, if you need anything at all, just go to our website, jillonmoney.com. You can always hit the contact button from there. And as always, wash your hands, wear your masks, maintain your physical distancing, and try to lift somebody up today. We'll talk to you tomorrow.